Let's go to 39. It's 5.139, correct? So 9 to the negative 1, is that the one you want to talk about? What is 9 to the negative 1? 1 over 9. That's it. Yep. Anybody have a different one they want? Yep. So 2 to the negative 3. 3 to the negative 3. Yep. Yes, that's correct. So you could write it either way. 27 over 8. That's fine. Kind of a shortcut. Just here, if you want to see a short version of it. Oh, yeah. The yeah, the negative. Another short, another way to talk about it too. If you have a over b to the negative n, that's going to be equal to b over a to the n power. If you flip what's inside, it just makes it positive. So look what happens here. When we flip it over, it gives you one. But it's a short way to remember that. Is that right there? That's a shortcut. Others from the homework. Seven. What should we do first? Can someone give me a good first step, or really what the only first step is? Yes, Gabby. Ah, uh, sorry, record. Yep. Uh, you could distribute the Yeah, so it's going to be negative 4 to the third and then m to the what? 6 over t to the third. At this point, do you have any negative exponents? No, you could stop there. That's fine. You could stop there. Now, the other thing is you have to make a decision. Do you want to cube 4? You could. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So you could write this as negative 64 m to the sixth over t cubed. You could write it that way if you wanted to. What about this one? Same idea, negative 5 cubed, n to the what power? 12 over r to the 6. Powers of powers you multiply, yes. I have a question that... So you, you treat it the same. It's going to be negative b to the 6, but it's going to be right there. That's what the... Okay, but you can do one more thing with this. It's an even power. What happens if you multiply a negative, one, negative number times itself an even number of times? Yeah, so then this is going to be 1 over just b to the 6th. So that would be 0. That's correct. That is correct right there. Because it's an even number of powers. So you, can you... So up with first, oh, don't want highlighters. So 1 over 6 minus 1 over 4. So what do you need? You need a common denominator to add, subtract fractions. So how about 1 over... So you get a common denominator. 12 would be your lowest common denominator. So 2 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is negative 1 twelfth. Yep, there it is. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Bless you. Okay, so let's have, I'm going to do the way I would do it personally. This is how I would do it. First thing I would do is I would take that negative 2 and I would bring it inside. It's powers of power, so it's going to become 7 to the negative 2, m to the 4th over m to the 6th times m to the third over 4. That's what I would do. There are other ways. That's fine. On the top, Sarah, on the top you have m to the fourth times m to the third. What is that going to come out to be? Um, m to the what? Okay. 7 over m to the sixth times 4. Wait, why is it m to the sixth? Is it the end of the nine? Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. So now, what can you do with that 7 to the negative 2? What... Um, yeah, make it 7 squared times 4 times m to the 6th. There's one last thing we can simplify. Yep. Did you just, so you didn't switch the whole entire fraction? Just that one. Yes. Ah, so you have m to the 7th over m to the 6th. What do you do with, what do you do with exponents when you're dividing? Subtract them. So what's going to be left on top? m to the 1st over 7 squared times 4. Now, could you multiply that out if you needed to? Sure. What's 7 times 7? So this is equal to m over 49 times 4. Anybody know what that is? Uh, what? 196. 196. Yeah. Wait, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be 794? No. Oh. It's 49 times 4 is 196. How about you do? If, go ahead. Oh, first, this is the way I would do it. I would take that 3 and I'd plug it into both of them. So it's 2 to the 3rd, p to the 3rd over q to the what? Sixth. Sixth. Times 3 to the negative 1, p to the negative 4, over q to the what power? 4. I would then simplify things piece by piece. If you try to stop, if you try to do too many things at once, you will do something small wrong and then be very sad at the end. What is q to the 6th times q to the 4th? q to the 10th. So I'm just simplifying the bottom as q to the 10th right now. What's p to the 3rd times p to the negative 4th? P 
to the what? Negative 1. So you have 2 to the third times 3 to the negative 1 times p to the what power? Negative 1. What can I do now? Can someone say clearly what I could do now? Gabby. Yeah, so you have 2 to the third over 3 to the first, p to the first, q to the tenth. So do you usually write the first power in there? No. What's 2 to the third? So it's 8 over 3 p q to the tenth. Up. I like this. Good good save there, Gabby. 5 to the negative 3, z to the negative 9. Do you see what I did to my z's right there? Yeah, I like that. And then this is a to the negative 3, a to the third, 15 to the negative 3, z to the sixth. So yeah, I, you, can, you can flip all these things around to your heart's content to get positive things. So you said you liked 2 to the third, a to the third over 5 to the third, z to the negative 9. And what did you multiply it by? You could do it times 15 to the third, a to the third over 8 to the third, z to the sixth. What's a to the third times a to the third? Correct. So you have a to the sixth over five to the thirds. Oh, it's there. Oh, that's not negative, right? That's yeah. positive. So it's five to the third, eight to the third, z to the what? Fifteenth. Right. Now here's the thing. Can you simplify this? This is the really important thing that you need to pay attention to, Sarah and Hannah, or you will not get full credit on this. This is perfectly correct, but it's not complete. You have to be very, very careful about simplifying this. What's another way to write 15? That's the same thing as 5 times 3, but it's to the third, right? What's another way to write 8? 2 times, no, no, that's also true. That's also true. To the third, z to the 15th. Uh, Sadea, take a breath. 15 is the same thing as 5 times 3. What is 8 the same as? 2 times 4. I'm showing you how to simplify that. I've done nothing other than break it up into individual factors. I'll show you if you let me finish the story of the magical land that is simplification. So, you have 2 to the third times 5 to the third times 3 to the third times a over 5 to the third times 2 to the third times 4 to the third times z to the... Why did I do that now? Can someone tell me? What can I do now? No questions, just an answer. What can I do now? Yeah. That goes away. That goes away. So what are you left with? Oh, I crossed the wrong one? Sorry. There we go. So what do I end up with? 3 to the third, a to the sixth, over 4 to the third times z to the, which you could write as if you wanted to, 27 a to the sixth over 64 z to the 15th. Either one of these would be 100% done. I know you do. You've seen this before. How many of you? Raise your hand if you've seen scientific notation before. The key thing to remember is that it's a times 10 to the n, but what's the key thing to remember about a? The absolute value of a has to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than what? 10. That's what you have to remember. It's what you have to remember. So, for example, 820,000. Can anybody write that or tell me out loud what that is? What is it? Times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fifth power, right? So what about this one right here? Similar. By the way, yeah, 10 to the fifth. Similar, right? It's going to be 7.2 times 10 to the what? Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because that one's really, really tiny. You're taking 7.2 and you're making it smaller. In this case, you're taking 8.2 and making it bigger. Excellent. Everybody stand up. So if you were going to simplify this right here, you would need a calculator to do the top. And you would need a calc. Please, if you are hurt, you don't have to stand up. For this one right here, if you plug this into your calculator, kids, be very careful about what you see. Sometimes, if you, like, this is not the answer, but when you plug something like this into your calculator, you might end up with, this is not the actual answer, I'm just making it up, you're going to end up with like this 9.82e15. Does anybody know what that means? It means times 10 to the. This means. 9.82 times 10 to the 15th. So what about this? 6.48 e negative 4. 
Yeah. yeah. Scientific notation is great for notarizing small, very small numbers or very large numbers. The key thing to realize, everybody, and this is the most common mistake for people that have dealt with withdrawing a scientific notation before, this number has to be between what and what? 1 and 10. Can it equal 1? Yes. Can it be equal to 10? No. It cannot be equal to the single digit. It has to be greater than or equal to 1. Exactly. So the last thing we have to talk about here today, and it's really not that challenging, but I think you need to be very careful about it. When you're adding and subtracting polynomials, adding, adding and subtracting polynomials, the really, you can sit, the really simple definition of a polynomial, everybody, you see this a lot of times. A can be any real number. A is any real number. And the exponent n is a whole number. So n is a whole number. And a is a real number. And you have a collection of those things. You've seen these before. How about this? x squared plus 2. Is that a polynomial? Yes, it is. 2 x cubed minus x squared plus 9. Is that a polynomial? Yes, it is. What about x squared plus 2x to the 1 half plus 9? Is that a polynomial? No. Why not? Because x to the half is isn't a whole number. A polynomial is just a collection of these terms. Any kind of collection of these terms is a polynomial. The question is, how do you go about writing them? The first thing is, you have to write them in descending power. So what's the power here? Then 2, then... What's the power of x right here? 0. x to the 0. 1 is divisible. You write it in descent. Remember how in standard form of equations, ax plus by, you put x, then y, then y. Alphabetical order. You need to come up with a rule that makes it easier for everybody. Descending, descending, descending power. So that's the first rule. So for example, is this written in the right order? What would the right order be, Hannah? Yeah, exactly. Very good. It's not a polynomial. Oh, yeah. Has to be a whole number. That's a great question. No, nope, not a polynomial. So they have special names: monomials, binomial, binomial, trinomial. Means three terms. Great. It just is the number of terms. That's it. That's it. So you can write these in order. You can identify what they are. But the key thing is, what happens when you need to add or subtract polynomials? So here's one of them, and here's another. What do you have to pair up? No, yeah, no, the no. like terms. How many people have dealt with like terms before? Like terms have the same base and the same power. Exponent, it's fine. The same base and the same power. Exponent. So in this case, you have negative 6m squared minus negative 5m squared. So you have negative 6m squared and minus negative 5m squared. If you add these together, what do you get? What do you get? Negative 6m squared minus negative 5m squared. What is that going to be? Negative m squared. If you have negative 6 apples and you add 5 apples to it, how many apples do you have? You have negative 1 apple, which makes no real sense, so I'll stop using apples. But we're not done yet because there's also the negative 8m minus 7m. What's negative 8m minus 7m? Negative 15m. And what's 5 minus negative 8? 13. 5 minus negative 8 is 13. So the answer to this would be negative m squared minus 15m plus 13. Yes? Absolutely. You could have just distributed the negative first. Absolutely. The key thing here, everybody, if you take away one thing, like terms. Like terms have the same what? Base and power. And as long as you have the same base and power, it's just adding apples together, or subtracting apples, or ending up with negative apples. Okay, now we're, we're quantifying what the ne negative apples looks like. Excellent. Okay, so tonight for your homework, tonight for your homework, you're going to be doing some basic taking polynomials and adding them together and subtracting them, but just remember, it's all about the like terms. Also, for tonight, you have some more questions from 5.1 to keep practicing exponents. Have a great weekend, everybody.